Hi, so I've received a lot of comments on the past few videos about people interested in Kotlin. Some are just getting started, some are wondering if they should take the plunge. So I thought I'd create an introductory video for Kotlin aimed at TypeScript developers, and this is Node, so backend development. We're just going to go over the advantages that Kotlin can give you over TypeScript. This isn't a full comparison, but just so you get an idea of what you're getting. And then we're going to go over some basic syntax, and then we'll look at the tooling and eventually move on to a little dummy project. To study out, what do you get when you switch to Kotlin? The first thing you get is speed. Since Kotlin is a compiled language rather than an interpreted one, for almost all use cases, it will actually run faster than Node. Another advantage you get is concurrency built in. The Kotlin has coroutines, which makes asynchronous code simpler. Kotlin also has a very robust type system, while TypeScript is good and its type system is very extensible. It is still just strapped on top of javascript uh, so the types are more of a facade whereas here types are always enforced and they're also more consistent and i find them easier to use this is a bit more of an opinion than just a fact but i do find the syntax for colin a bit more ergonomic i also prefer the tooling since js tooling can be kind of a handful once you have to add prettier eslint all these other things and these two also opinion spouse genuinely believe that colin has better support for functional programming and it also has support for better object-oriented programming if that's something you want to do so i'll just go over some of the basic syntax the first difference is that Kotlin has an entry point, which TypeScript does not, which means the code will run from inside the main function. Console log, so instead of doing console log, you should do print line, very similar. Uh, Kotlin also has uh, immutable and mutable variables, and the way you do that is with val and var. So val is the equivalent of const, and var is the equivalent of let. Function declarations are also very similar to TypeScript. The only difference here is that you write fun instead of function. An interface in TypeScript is the equivalent of a data class in Kotlin. Once once again, the syntax is very similar. These can also be set as mutable if I change this to var. You can also have nullable fields. Kotlin has null safety, so you won't get unexpected null pointer exceptions. The way you annotate that is by adding a question mark. So adding a question mark here is the equivalent of having undefined, and here I'm defaulting into null. You can also do enums. It's a bit nicer than in TypeScript. Here I have an enum called state, and it can be waiting, running, or stopped and this is how you declare that in Kotlin. Declaring arrays is where you start to look a little bit different. Here I have an immutable array, so that means that nothing can be appended to it, and here I have a mutable array that can be edited later. Declaring a map or an object, as they're sometimes called in TypeScript, is also a little bit different. So once again, there's a mutable map and an immutable map. When you initially declare it, you can do map of, and then here you create pairs like this with the two keyword. But once I start adding things to the mutable map, it all looks very similar. Uh, and the last example of syntax that I wanted to show you is a for each loop. So here I just declare an array or a list and then I immediately loop for it. So the lambda function is moved to the outside of a trailing lambda. It looks a bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, it does make your code a little bit simpler and it reduces the number of indents you have to do. The visa equivalent. And that's it. That's the basic syntax I wanted to show for Kotlin. I think you can get pretty far on this, but once you want to expand it, you can look into the documentation and look at specific examples. The next thing I want to talk about when moving from TypeScript and trying out Kotlin is the editor. Most people writing TypeScript do so in VS Code, but most people writing Kotlin do so in IntelliJ. So Kotlin is open source and this editor is open source, but the main contributor is this company that makes editors. The main people writing Kotlin are people who develop code editors. So they don't have an incentive to make an LSP. It is possible. And if someone wrote an LSP, then you could use Kotlin inside of VS Code and have a pleasant experience. But given the community is quite small and the main contributor puts a lot of effort into this software, the best way to do it right now, for better or worse, is to use IntelliJ. And the editor is free and the Kotlin language is still open source. I just want to make that clear that you can create your own LSP and there's been attempts, but none of those are maintained because most people just end up using this. I'm hopeful that as the community grows, that we'll get these extra tools, but we're not quite there yet. Next thing I want to talk about is the build system. In TypeScript, NPM is two things. It is both the tool you use to add dependencies and it's the repository where most dependencies are stored but that's not the case here so the tool for installing dependencies is gradle and gradle has a bad name but it's actually not that scary the problem with it is that it's very very extensible you can essentially make it do anything and it doesn't always have the defaults you expect but 
if you just add some sensible defaults, you can kind of use it like a package.json. There's a few different blocks here. The first one I want to bring your attention to is repository. And I'm adding Maven Central. So Maven is like the NPM repository where most of the packages are stored. So I'm adding this, although you can add many other repositories. This is just the one where most of the packages are. Add that one here. And then I add dependencies in here. And this is a format they follow. If you go to the Maven repository website, it'll give you these whenever you look it up. I add a logging framework and then I add my server dependencies, which we'll get into later. And then I have database dependencies. And then up here I have some plugins. So these just give me some extra functionality. This one lets me use Kotlin with the JVM Kotlin. This makes my application an executable. By default, it's a library. And this one just gives me some tools for serialization using annotations, which I will use when writing the server. You also need an application block when your application needs to be a binary. And like I said before, Kotlin has an entry point. So all this needs to do is point your app to the entry point and also mention what it should be named. Instead of writing your npm functions like you do the npm run star, npm run dev, these are just defaults in Gradle, although you can add your own ones. You have steps in here so you can run your project, you can build it, you can run tests. You have all these things built in so you don't really have to write those yourself. But if I run build, you get this build folder. And since I added the application plugins, I get a distribution. If not, I would just get the libs. So in the side of the application, I get a tar and a zip with whatever the name I gave here. I'm currently in the distributions folder, as you can see, and then I can unzip the app, which gives me that. And then now this app has a binary in it, which lets me run. So app slash bin slash app. And there you go. So I don't have the environment variable set, but it's running my program. If you do that inside your Docker image with the correct environment variable setup, that's how you run the project compiled by Gradle. So Gradle is a bit scary, but like I said, if you don't do too much with it, if you don't push it to its limits, it's actually quite simple to use. Let's build a simple web server, something you could build in TypeScript quite easily just to see how it compares. So as you can see, we have a few dependencies. So the server ones are all Ktor based. Ktor is the equivalent of Express. And then I just have a Postgres driver since we'll be writing dedicated queries. I initiate a data source, which is just a connection to the database. This comes from the Postgres dependency I added. And then I just grab all these variables from the environment. And I just added this so that you could see how to grab an environment variable. And now using Ktor, I just create a server on port 8080 using the Netty engine. None of this is particularly important, but this is the equivalent of starting an Express.js server. I add a few plugins, which I'm pretty sure exist in Express. This one gives me content negotiation. So this adds the headers for application JSON, and it also serializes and deserializes the data. I also add a status page, which just handles exceptions. This isn't a video about whether or not you should use exceptions for errors, but since that's the default way in TypeScript, I just added it here. So you catch exceptions and you return bad request with the exception message. And then here I define my routes. So I create a block for routing and then I have a get request on flash health check, which just returns a status code of OK. And then I accept a post request. This is a wallet, by the way, a simple wallet that's saved to the data. But I accept a post request to create a wallet and I'll show the code for that now. And this is as simple as it gets. I just use the data source to grab a new connection. I execute a statement with a balance of zero and an ID of a randomly generated ID and then I return the ID. So I create the wallet and then I respond with the ID. I have a request here to get the balance of the wallet and this will look very similar. So now I grab a connection. I select the balance where the ID is whatever ID I want. And here I set the ID. I execute the query and then I use the result to pass the result. And if no wallet is found, I throw an exception which will be caught up at top by my status page. And then I have a few more functions. So there is one for crediting the wallet uh, which just sets for balance to be the current balance plus whatever amount we want to credit with. And then I have another one for debiting at the wallet, which will just be whatever the current balance is minus whatever amount we want to debit. And that's it. This is a full vertical slice of a very simple application, just so that you can see how everything works together, how the server works, how the database works. This is how you create a simple server as close to TypeScript as I could reasonably make it. I tried to keep it familiar. Hopefully this is enough of an introduction so that you can go off on your own and uh, use whatever tools you want to experiment with. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, especially of way to the end. I really appreciate every single view, every single comment and every single like. It's been amazing to watch so many people be interested in Kotlin. I absolutely love these technologies and I'm just sharing whatever the hell I've been playing with that week. So thank you. Take care.